Today we're taking a look at the Mel Kuyper way too early quarterback rankings for the 2023 NFL Draft. He ranked his top 10, and then I pointed out some players that he did miss slash leave out of his rankings, as I do every year. Number one, Bryce Young. This one should not come as any real surprise here, at least one and two. The order can be debated, but the rankings make plenty of sense there. Young had a very, very strong 2021 campaign. He did, after all, win the Heisman Trophy, so not a whole lot more you could have expected there. The knock on Young is that he doesn't have ideal size. He's a bit thin and a bit short. Not terribly short, but he's not big either. The rest of the traits, despite being a bit of an off-platform throw, the arm strength's great, the ball placement's really good there. A lot of traits, a lot of skills, just doesn't have the ideal size. He will be dinged for that in the NFL draft process. But you can't knock the production out of Bryce Young. 47 touchdowns, 7 INTs, has the traits that you want. I have no real complaints with Young at number one, nor with C.J. Stroud at number two overall. Now, Stroud began the year slow. There were even calls to, hey, you got to put, put, put in somebody else at, at quarterback. You, you can't be putting this guy in there. Stroud's not the answer. There were calls to play Quinn uh, Ewers. That did not go down. And Ohio State was correct. Stroud offers a bigger size, bigger frame, more prototypical build than Bryce Young does. I do think his supporting cast with what will end up being multiple first-round picks at receiver is a little bit better. Not by a massive margin, but a bit better than what Young had. His production... Also very impressive, and I wonder how many uh, people will make an argument about the cold being a factor. He did not play very well uh, against Michigan in the cold, and that was really his only bad game as the season, even not, not elite game, I should say, as the year went on. So for the most part, these two players, Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud, are viewed as the consensus top two quarterbacks in what is shaping up to be a better draft class at QB than what we had in the 2021 draft, or 2022 draft, excuse me. So who would you rather have for 2023? Type in BY for Bryce Young or CJ for CJ Stroud. Number three, it is Tyler Van Dyke. And I like this placement and positioning here for Van Dyke, who I was very impressed by once he took over in Miami. Good size, good arm strength. There is a slightly elongated motion, not terribly long. It's not like a giant loop, but it's not as quick as other motions are, but the arm strength helps make up for it. He's number 12 in Kuiper's way too early top 25 rankings, by the way. The production was good. Now, I think that hopefully a an offense that is a bit better around him will result in a higher completion percentage. Again, the yards were lower because he wasn't a full-time starter. 25 touchdowns, 6 INTs. The flashes are very intriguing out of Van Dyke. He is one of the guys I am most excited to watch this year in college football. That's the top three. Seven more plus my other eight guys I want to watch this year. Who will be quarterback one in the 2023 NFL Draft? Make your predictions for me at the pinned comments of today's video. So, if the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. The surprise ranking is number four, Anthony Richardson, the quarterback from Florida. He's number 13 on Kuiper's rankings, which is... <sighs> that's dicey, man. He is a massive boom or bust prospect. The traits are there. Big arm, got a good frame, great dual threat as well. You are banking on all upside with Richardson being ranked this high. In a very limited role at Florida due to injuries and some alleged attitude stuff and Dan Mullen being Dan Mullen, he didn't play that much. And when he was out there, he wasn't shockingly elite either. Sub 60% completion rate, six touchdowns, five INTs, did have 400 yards on the ground. I have to see it for an entire year before I get fully on board with Richardson. Remember, Mel Kuyper had Emory Jones at number 10 on his way too early last year when it comes to QBs. Number five, this one is a controversial name. That is Will uh, Levis, the quarterback from Kentucky. Former Penn State transfer. Had a breakout year for Kentucky. But this is another boom or bust player. The traits and more experienced than like Richardson are there. Arm strength, mobility. He does need more consistency. And the NFL draft is all about projection. So 
when you have an entire year of college football left, I understand some, you know, question marks about the full-fledged, you know, projection. Levis did flash. The arm, the mobility. But he wasn't always perfect in that area, which should be a red flag. Now, without Wandale Robinson, I am very curious how Levis ends up faring. He is a dual threat with some good size and mobility there. Not the best numbers, but remember, sacks also count against you from the quarterback position uh, with the uh, yards on the ground. So pure NFL, that number will probably be a little bit higher. A lot of hype around this year's quarterback class, the way too early version, I should say. How many quarterbacks do you think end up being drafted in round one of the 2023 NFL draft? Let me know in the comments. Jaron Hall, number six here, and I like putting him in the top ten. Undersized, which is a red flag for teams, makes it tough to go more over the middle on your passes. Good athlete, can make some highlight reel plays. The biggest red flag for me, he is already 24 years old. He did the whole Mormon mission thing, right? That would make him a 25-year-old rookie. I don't like that as a potential first-round pick at QB. That's just a little bit too much for me. I like a lot of what he brings. I would feel better if he were, you know, entering his age 21 season. He's not. That, that is a big difference. It's not quite Brandon Whedon-esque, but that is a ding teams will have because by the time he's finishing up his first contract, he's going to be 30. And that's if he goes in the first round. That's not what NFL teams want. If you haven't already, Please subscribe to us here at Chat Sports. I want to do more NFL draft videos because I am a nerd and I find that stuff fun. But we need, I did say I was a nerd, but we need more help to get there. Help us get to 300,000 subscribers by hitting that big red button and subscribing for free right here at Chat Sports. Tanner McKee checks in at number seven, and I just, I don't know about this one. Um... McKee does check off a lot of the prototypical boxes of a QB. He's got a big arm. He's tall. He's got the, the pro-style quarterback at Stanford. My issue here is that even though we can argue that the Stanford offense is old, outdated, and holds back quarterbacks, Tanner McKee has simply not been productive in his time in, or in college. He has not been the eye-popping level of production out of the quarterback position. That's not what you're angling for from that standpoint. You needed more from Tanner McKee in his NFL career. He has not, or his CFP career, he has not been productive enough to justify, for me, the round one buzz. This is not first round pick production. Honestly, you got to double the yards and double the touchdowns. Now, he struggled down the stretch. Some traits are there. He's not a finished product yet. Devin Leary from NC State next up here, and I, I like this inclusion. Major, major breakout 2021 campaign from Devin Leary. And like more and more QBs, though, he doesn't have the ideal size teams still choose to covet. But as a potential sleeper, if you can have a sleeper at the quarterback position, Leary is a very good name to keep an eye out, in large because of that massive jump in production. His first two years at NC State, to be blunt, he wasn't very good. 52.1% completion percentage. He had not much production. He's a, he's a pocket passer, not a runner, but 37 touchdowns against five INTs in similar games played with way more yards. Keep an eye on Leary if you want to go college football only. How about a sleeper for Heisman if NC State can win the ACC this year? Now, speaking of sleepers, I like Devin Leary as one. I want you guys to name a sleeper prospect for me to keep an eye out for this upcoming college football season at the quarterback position. Drop that name for me in the comments section right now. Phil Jerkovich, number nine. He was, by the way, number eight on Kuiper's early rankings last year. He had transferred from Notre Dame to Boston College as a starter, showed some promise. This past year, though, in 2021, he was not healthy. It was supposed to be a season-ending injury. He came back, and overall, the production has not been great from Jerkovic. 16 games in the past two years. Sub-60% completion rate. That is a huge red flag. Now, it was above that number in his healthy year, so that's valuable. Has the arm, decent mobility, good size, a lot of traits here. Needs a big step forward. 
Maybe nobody outside of like Kenny Pickett had a bigger step forward last year than Hendon Hooker. Transferred from Virginia Tech, wins a job for the Volunteers, and takes a massive step forward. The red flag here, beyond being a one-year wonder, he is already 24 years old. He would also be a 25-year-old rookie. Not ideal. Will be dinged by the NFL. But look at the growth, right? More accurate from Virginia Tech to Tennessee. Almost the same number of yards in fewer games, by the way. Touchdowns, the same, but the interceptions drop way down. Hooker was more consistent in far fewer games for the Volunteers than he ever was at Virginia Tech. So that is Hooker's, or excuse me, Kuiper's top 10 with Hooker rounding out the top 10. Who did Mel Kuiper disrespect in his quarterback rankings? I will make note, last year he had Keaton Slovis, Jaden Daniels, and Emory Jones in his top 10. All three of them are back at the college level this year. They are not in the top 10. Who did Mel Kuiper disrespect? Drop a name for me in the comment section. Maybe this name is most intriguing. And we'll go through all four of these guys here. Cam Ward, Sam Hartman, Grayson McCall. Last year, Spencer Rattler was quarterback one for Mel Kuyper. After a bad year at Oklahoma, didn't even crack the top 10. Rattler was not nearly as good in 2021 as he was in 2020. Now, the, the completion percentage did go up, which, okay. But the yards per attempt plummeted down to 79 Fewer touchdowns, more INTs on a per-pass basis there. In addition to the potential off-the-field stuff that is worried, I'm sure we all watched the Netflix series, Rattler has to bounce back. I was a bit surprised he didn't make the top 10, though, for Mel Kuyper. Here's a sleeper name for you. Cam Ward, or Ward who was at in, uh, transferred, I should say, this past year from Incarnate Word, thank you, Jeremy, to Washington State. Decent size. This is a potentially more traitsy version of either Gardner Minshew or last year's big-time transfer, Bailey Zappi. Good production. Can he take that next step forward? If he does, do not sleep on Cam Ward. Sam Hartman is next up here. Awesome touchdown numbers. Here's my red flag. He has never been a 59% completion percentage guy. He's not accurate. And offense, I get blah, blah, blah. Not an accurate thrower of the football. That has to be ironed out. By the way, Sam Hartman, also a little bit older than what you would typically like in your quarterbacks. Uh, he's not exactly a, a young player at this point in his, in his uh, CFB career. He turns 23 in a couple weeks, so he would be a 24-year-old rookie. Grayson McCall is next up here. He has certainly benefited from going up against lesser competition I, I see backup quarterback. He doesn't turn the football over. He's generally very accurate. Doesn't have the world's greatest size or measurables, but I do think he is a draftable prospect as we sit right now. Four more names I want to mention with apologies to Emory Jones and Jaden Daniels, who, and JT, JT Daniels, who didn't make the list after being in Kuiper's top 10 last year. Oops. Keaton Slovis, Jake Hayner, Brennan Armstrong, the lefty, and KJ Jefferson. Slovis is at Pitt now, USC last year. I just don't think he's good. Uh, Jake Hayner is, again, kind of a backup-style quarterback. Armstrong's a lefty, kind of intriguing. I am very curious to see how K.J. Jefferson fares without Traylon Burks. If he plays well, there will be some buzz around him this upcoming season.